Well, you've been uh, working on these problems subsequent to the crisis. Has the economics profession learned a great deal from the errors that were revealed there? Are they back on track? I think what's happened after the crisis is that economics is in total well aware that something went wrong. I mean, uh, why did it not provide a, a better set of understanding of this disaster about to occur? Now, having said that, there were some things that economics got right in the crisis. The fact that we responded to it and didn't end up with a Great Depression of the 1930s actually was to a degree precisely because people had learned the lessons of the 1930s. So some of the issues about how you deal with straightforward deflation, the appropriate form of intervention, you can see those as positives for economics. But I think in terms of the overall model of our assumptions about free financial markets, I think there's been a shattering, or there ought to be a shattering, of the self-confidence of the, uh, uh, the previous conventional wisdom. But as always in these circumstances, there are some people who are just circling the wagon around uh, the existing a uh, dominant philosophy and saying, oh, well, if we just tinker around with some of the assumptions here and there, it'll be fine. Or indeed, uh, following the old classic technique, uh, which says, well, uh, what this proves is we didn't have free markets enough. If only we'd, we'd liberalized more, if only we hadn't had the statist interventions of Fannie and Freddie, everything would have been fine. And I don't think that's good enough. And I think that's why uh, the INET uh, institution is absolutely vital. It is, is a way for giving energy and an organizing framework and a pulling together of the great deal of good economics, which was always there, but which I think had got, at least in the policy-making uh, domain, uh, pushed to the side.